All right, the Democratic resistance is running at full tilt, making threats and launching investigations of 81 people and enterprises associated, and some of them not even associated, with President Trump. Now, naturally, the House Judiciary Committee Chairman, Democrat Jerry Nadler, is out bloviating for the president's impeachment. Do you think the president obstructed justice? Yes, I do. If it, it's very clear that the president obstructed justice. It's very clear. Uh, 1,100 times he referred to the Mueller investigation as a witch hunt. He tried to, f he, f he fired, uh, uh, he tried to protect uh, Flynn from being uh, investigated by the, uh, by the FBI. He fired Comey in order to stop the Russian thing, as he told uh, NBC News. Okay, hold on a second. So now, giving one's opinion qualifies as obstruction of justice. Now, I don't know what federal criminal law Nadler studied, but my legal background says that is just ludicrous. Now, contrary to what Nadler and company claim, none of this is about exercising their constitutional right to oversight of the executive branch. I want you to understand that. It's not about what they say it's about. So document requests, who needs documents? Come on, why hear testimony? They've already made up their minds. Mueller, by the way, has spent two years investigating Russia's possible collusion in the 2016 election, and it looks like he's come up with nothing. He's issued indictments, called witnesses before the grand jury. He's interviewed more than 40 people. He's reviewed over a million documents, and he's even referred separate matters to the Southern District of New York. And remember the Democrats' glowing words about Mueller when he was appointed? This is an absolutely brilliant choice. There is no more respected figure in American law enforcement than Bob Mueller. I think the best thing that happened, Chris, was to have something like uh, uh, Mueller to come in. He's a pro. He's going to follow the facts where they lead. Okay, how odd then. Then why does Nadler not trust him and his prosecutors, who've already, by the way, I just found this out, spent $25 million of the taxpayer money on this investigation? Why did they trust him then to get to the bottom of things? He was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Even Ty Cobb says so now. Now, the way I see Nadler will, I mean, come on, he, the way I see it, Nadler's going to almost entirely retill the ground that Mueller has already passed over. But why is Nadler doing this? Getting back to our theme of unmasking for the sole purpose of creating a political spectacle and to continue it right up until the last vote is counted in 2020. Remember, President Nixon was threatened with impeachment for obstruction of justice. President Clinton was impeached for obstruction of justice. So why is Nadler not moving forward with articles of impeachment against President Trump immediately? Impeachment is a long way down the road. We don't, we don't have the facts yet. Um, but we're going to initiate uh, uh, proper investigation. We do not now have... Uh, uh, the evidence all, all sorted out and everything to, to, do an, to, to, to do an impeachment. Before you impeach somebody, you have to persuade the American public that it ought to, to happen. Actually, that's not in the Constitution either, but well, whatever, that's the Constitution. But a separate question, isn't that what Nadler has been trying to do with his recent impeachment media tour? He's been trying to convince the public that there are a thousand reasons to impeach the president, even if he cannot prove a single one. Meanwhile, the House Ways and Means Committee chair, Richard Neal, is requesting the president's tax returns from the IRS. That's a shock. A Pelosi spokesman says they will take all necessary steps, including litigation, if necessary, to obtain them. What does that have to do with collusion? Well, anyway, all of this sends a thrill up the leg of the media resistance, of course. Yesterday, the New York Times editorial page tantalized its readers by predicting a long and painful ordeal for the president and those close to him. Quote, political investigations tend to be marathons rather than sprints. With his investigation, Mr. Nadler is looking to build a case for impeachment. So compelling, it will have enough bipartisan support to survive the Republican-controlled Senate. Barring that, his investigation will serve to keep the heat on Mr. Trump and perhaps Keep the Democratic base at least somewhat placated as the next election approaches. Aha! Well, at least they admit that this is an entirely politically motivated attack meant to soften up the president for 2020 and dangle some red meat on a hook for their base. 
Now, note the wishful thinking. I love that line in the editorial. F thinking of bipartisan support for impeachment. Hmm. Well, wanna, can you count that out completely? Well, at a time when Republicans should be bolstering the president's agenda, on key issues especially, I see on one at least they're undermining him. And leadership can't seem to hold it together. Those uh, hoping the president would not take the national emergency route, <clears throat> uh, once he decided to do that, I said I would support it, but I was hoping he wouldn't take that particular path. Well, that's a really bold statement. I was supporting of it, but I hope he wouldn't take it, meaning he's not going to insist that his members put the real pressure, as he could do, uh, on his members to actually push. You know, look, with all due respect, it is partly Mitch McConnell's fault that the president had to declare a national emergency at all. He and Paul Ryan promised the president when he signed that ridiculous omnibus spending bill last year that they would get him the funding he needed for the wall before last year ended, no matter what happened in the election. Well, what happened? Well, we predicted on this show. They didn't do it. McConnell has done a masterful job of getting judges through the Senate. Phenomenal on the court, Supreme Court stuff, all of that. And I, he can't control how Collins, Murkowski, people like Rand Paul vote. But he basically signaled to them that their vote against the president on this issue of the national emergency was OK. My friends, Congress specifically delegated to the president the authority to declare national emergencies. They did it long ago in sections 201 and 301 of the National Emergencies Act. If you're a law geek, it's 50 U.S.C. Uh, 1601. He cited this in his official declaration. The president did as is required. And the president has already invoked his national emergency powers on three occasions, adding to the 28 earlier national emergency measures that remain in effect today. This is an important point. Congress has never before moved to end a president's emergency declaration until now. Now, even the New York Times front page today painted a grim picture of what's happening at the border. Here's a quote. A feverish teenager with a vile-smelling wound on his foot, a man with a head injury and, a, and bright red eyes, children with fevers, coughs, and colds. And the Customs and Border Patrol numbers of family units crossing the border was breathtaking. We have apprehended and encountered more families in just five months and five days than last year's record total. Now 70% of all crossings are from these countries, and a full 62% of all crossings and encounters are vulnerable families and children. We've had almost 2,400 fraudulent claims of families. Now, more on the dire situation of the border is going to be coming up later in the show. You do not want to miss it. It goes way beyond that. And there's a lot more in that New York Times piece we're going to get into. And we will be naming names and unmasking the motives of those on the left and some on the right who are working to stop stronger enforcement at our southern border, which includes a physical barrier. The president must continue to stand firm on this issue and forge ahead against the Chamber of Commerce Republicans who want an endless flow of cheap labor and the open borders Democrats who think they have an endless supply of new voters. And as for the Democratic impeachment squad, keep unmasking their real motives, you bet. If they cared about the Constitution and the rule of law, they wouldn't have let the border get this out of control in the first place. And they would have demanded that Hillary Clinton and her protectorate pay for their wrongdoing. That's law and order, don't you think? This is a political war. All of this that you're seeing around you, and it's meant to undo the president's successes and block his agenda for the next two years. That's all it's about. This isn't just harassment of President Trump. He said that today. It's harassment of the millions of Americans who voted for his agenda, and it's an abuse of the entire democratic process that the Democrats claim to care so much about. And that's the angle.